In today's video, we're going to look at optimization. We're going to um, use derivatives to solve optimization problems. That's when we want to find the max min of something. And first step is to understand the problem. So just like in when we did related rates, you want to identify your given quantities and all quantities that you need to determine. The best way to do this is to draw a, a sketch, a diagram, and label it with the known and unknown values. Then you're going to write what's called the primary equation for the quantities that is to be maximized or minimized. So read the problem, ask yourself, what am I trying to minimize or what am I trying to maximize? And write an equation for that situation. This is called your primary equation. Then you're going to look at that primary equation, redu reduce it um, so that it only has one independent variable. So if it's in terms of like volume in terms of our um, radius and height, then we need to rewrite it so it's in terms of all radius or all height. So we're not going to use implicit differentiation at all. We want one independent variable. Now, in order to do this, you might have to find a secondary equation that relates your independent variables together so that you can substitute in place of one of the variables so that you have your um, primary equation written in terms of one independent variable. Once you have successfully found your primary equation in terms of one variable, you're going to determine the feasible region or feasible domain of the primary equation. So basically you're looking at the independent variable of that, that's in your primary equation now and figure out what x values make sense in this equation. So, or what, what values make sense for that independent variable. Then you're gonna determine the desired max or min value. So you're gonna find your max or minimum by using either the first or second derivative test. My suggestion to you is to use the second derivative test in most cases, this one is the easiest. So all you have to do is differentiate the problem twice Find the critical values through the first derivative, plug the first, plug that into the second derivative, and figure out if you have a max or a min. And you'll be looking for a max if you're trying to maximize something, looking for a min if you're trying to minimize something. That saves you a lot of time than having to do a uh, sign chart with the first derivative test. Okay, and then once you find your answer, you're going to write your answer in sentence form. As always, make sure you include your units of measurement and make sure you fully answer whatever the question is. Now, the best way to learn optimization is through examples, so we're just going to work a few. Here's our first example. A man wishes to have a rectangular shaped garden in his backyard. He has 50 feet of fencing with, with which to enclose the garden. Find the mentions for the largest garden he could have if he was using all of the fencing. So I draw a rectangular um, fence garden and my primary equation, so but what am I trying to optimize? I want the dimensions for the largest garden he can have. So largest garden would be the largest area of the garden. So area would be x times y. So that's my primary equation, but I have a problem. It's in terms of two independent variables, x and y. So I have to come up with a secondary equation. So I need to figure out something I can relate x and y to. So they gave us that he has 50 feet of fencing. Well, that fencing, that 50 feet of fencing is going to be used to do the perimeter of the garden. So our perimeter is equal to 2x plus 2y in this case. And so 50 is equal to 2x plus 2y. Now I'm going to solve this for one of the variables. It really doesn't matter which one you chose. I'm going to solve for y by subtracting the 2x from each side and dividing by 2. Then I'm going to go back to my primary equation, replace y with 25 minus x. And then I'm going to simplify this down or actually get rid of the parentheses by doing the distributive property. And now I can differentiate this. So now I'm going to begin actually optimizing the problem by doing our second derivative test. So in order to find the maximum area, we're going to find the derivative of a with respect to x. And then we figure out where our derivative is equal to zero. It does not exist since it's a polynomial. It is only be where 25 minus 2x is equal to zero. We solve that and we get that x is equal to 25 halves. Now I need to determine if this is a um, maximum value or a minimum value. Best way to do this is a second derivative test. So I need to find the second derivative of area. All right, so our second derivative would just be negative 2. Well, that is negative, and if the second derivative is negative at your critical value, since this is always negative, um, you have a maximum point. So I know that 25 halves maximizes the area of this. So now i got to make sure I answer the question. It said find the dimensions of the largest area. So I've only found one, one side. So I know that x is equal to 25 halves um, feet. So now I need to find y. So I'm going to use the equation y equals 25 minus x. Simplify that and solve for y, and I end up that y is equal to also 25 halves. So answer my question in sentence form. The largest garden will have dimensions of 25 halves feet by 25 halves feet, and you're done with your first optimization problem. Let's move on to the next problem. 
An open top box is to be made by cutting congruent squares of the side length X from the corners of a 20 by 25 feet sheet of tin and bending up the sides. How large should the square be to make the box hold as much as possible while resulting maximum volume? So let's start by drawing a picture. So I'm going to draw a picture of the square of the sheet of tin, which is 25 feet by 20 feet, oh, 20 inches, sorry, 25 inches by 20 inches. Then I'm going to cut out squares in each corner. These squares are going to be X by X dimension. And then on those dashed lines, I'm going to fold, I'm going to fold up where I cut out, then I'm going to fold up and form an open top box. So that's what I'm going to draw here is my box. And then so if the original front of it was 25 inches and I cut out X on one side and X on the other side, the box has dimensions of 25 minus 2X. And it has a width of 20 minus 2X. And the height has to be height of X, the, the squares I cut out. And so let's see, what are we trying to maximize? We want to maximize the volume. So our primary equation is going to be the volume of this object. Well, remember, volume of a prism is length times width times height. So that means our volume would be equal to x times 25 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x. Now I could take the derivative like this, but that would be kind of complex. So I'm just going to multiply it out and get a polynomial so I don't have to use the um, product rule or, the, or anything else when I'm finding this. Or if you want to put it in standard form, 4x cubed minus 90x plus 50x. All right, and then I'm going to differentiate this using our second derivative test to find our maximum. Again, this is a polynomial, so it always exists. So to find our critical value, we're just going to set our derivative equal to zero and solve. I could simplify this out and take out our GCF, or you can just solve it like it is. Since I'm going to use a quadratic formula, I'm not going to bother taking out the GCF. You could if you want to. So we figure out our critical values are 45 plus or minus 5 the square root of, six, of 21 over 6. So that would be 45 plus 5 the square root of 21 over 6, or 45 minus 5 plus the, um, times the square root of 21 over 6. Now, plugging both of these into my calculator, I see that 45 plus 5 the square root of 21 over 6 is approximately 11.319, and 45 minus 5 the square root of 21 over 6 is approximately 3.681. Now, I need to figure out if both of these are possible maximum points or if they are in my um, feasible region. So let's talk about the feasible region for this one. So a feasible region is what x values make sense in this problem. Well, if I started with a 10 of 20... 25 by 20, I know that I can't, and I got to make a volume and box, x has to be at least pot greater than zero. But the length of x can, um, I cannot cut so much out so that I don't have another dimension. So I look at my shortest dimension, which is 20 minus 2x. And I set that cannot equal zero, so x cannot be 10. So x can't go up to 10. So my conclusion is my feasible region is between zero and 10. For that reason, I will throw out this one critical value of 11.319. So our only possible critical value is 45 minus 5, the square root of 21, all over 6. Now, remember, we need to figure out if, prove that this is actually a maximum, not a minimum value formed at this critical value. So to do that, I'm going to complete the second derivative test by taking the second derivative of our volume equation. Now, because you can't see it, I'm going to rewrite the first derivative down again. Differentiating this, I get my second derivative of volume with respect to x is equal to negative 180 plus 24x. Now, remember our second derivative says we evaluate that derivative at that critical value. So when you do this, evaluate with um, the exact value. So notice I'm putting in the substituting in the exact value. The best way to do this is to store this value in A or something in your calculator so that it saves you a little work when you're typing it in. But you just type it in, and then I find that I get approximately negative 91. Again, I don't care exactly what that value is. The main fact is it's negative, so that means it's less than zero, which means that I have a maximum value using the second derivative test. So yes, our maximum value will occur when x is equal to that 3.6. Um, now we want to make sure we're answering the question. We want to know how large the box would be, um, the square that you cut out. So the square should be approximately 3.68 inches for each side, those lengths. Now, it also asks us for a little bit more information. It asks us also to figure out what the maximum resulting maximum volume would be. So I'm going to continue my sentence to say that the resulting, this results in a maximum volume of, and then to find your maximum volume, all I do is go back to my original volume equation and substitute in place of x 
our exact answer for x. So this is where that storing of the value comes in very handy into our volume equation. Now I'm going to do it into the factor, the original volume equation. You can do it into the, the cubic function that you found later on. Doesn't matter which one, as long as you're confident in your mathematical work. But again, do not substitute in 3.68. You need to substitute in the exact value. You'll get what's called a rounding error, and you'll be too, you can be too far off in your answer for the volume for it to be appropriate. So plugging this in, I get that the maximum volume is approximately 820.53 cubic inches. Okay, I want to pause and you try number three. This one is a year term problem. Okay, so I want to start with finding your um, primary equation. Sketch your diagram and find your primary equation. Okay, so we just draw a can, a right cylinder, and we have dimensions of radius of r, because they didn't tell us anything about it, and a height of h, and we know that the volume is 54 cubic inches, so it has to be a certain amount of um, corn um, beef hash that fits into this um, can. But that's not what I'm trying to maximize. I'm trying to find the least amount of material. So the material that's used to form this is not the volume or the area, but it's the surface area. So our primary equation is going to be the surface area of the cylinder. Now the surface area is the area of the base, the bottom, which is a circle, plus the area of the top, which is also a circle, so that's two times the area of a circle, plus the circumference around the can, I mean the distance around the can, which is the circumference times the height because that forms a rectangle. And so this is our equation of our surface area, and this is what we're trying to ma maximize. But because it is not in single variable, you have to find a secondary equation. Find your secondary equation. Okay, to find the secondary equation, I'm going to use the knowledge that the volume of a right cylinder cone is a right cylinder is equal to um, pi r squared h. And so we know the volume has to be 54. So solving for h, I get h is equal to 54 divided by pi r squared. So now I'm going to go back to my primary equation, replace h with 54 divided by pi r squared, and simplify that down. Okay, next we need to find our um, critical values. So I'll pause while you find your critical values for this surface area function. Now, to use that, um, I'm going to change my notation here. I'm going to replace s of a surface area with f of x notation. So it's just a change of notation. So f of x is going to equal to surface area. And I just did that because it's going to be easier to do my derivative notation with this, but it's not required at all. All right, so the derivative of f of x is equal to 4 pi r minus 108 r to the negative 2. So we need to simplify this, find a common denominator, and rewrite it without negative exponents. So this becomes our derivative. Now before I figure out whether derivative equals zero or does not exist, I'm going to look at my feasible regions for r. What makes sense for r? Well, r needs to be positive, or we wouldn't have a radius, we wouldn't have a can. So our main thing is r has to be greater than zero, and h also has to be greater than zero. And so I don't have to worry about where this is not, does not exist, because then r would be zero, which would not make sense in this problem. So all i got to do is set the numerator equal to zero and solve to find our critical value. So r is equal to the cube root of 45 divided by pi. Okay, now we need to verify that this is actually um, minimizing our materials used. And so I need to do this, continue the second derivative test. So now that I need to find our second derivative to our function. So remember our derivative was 4 pi r minus 180 r to the negative 2. So our second derivative would be 4 pi plus 360 r to the negative 3. Again, we're going to simplify that and get rid of our negative exponent and add the two fractions by getting a common denominator. And we end up that our second derivative is equal to 4 pi r cubed. Oh, wait, I didn't simplify it down. So now we're just going to evaluate our second derivative at um, our critical point. Again, I don't really care about what this number is. The main thing is, is it positive or is it negative? And when I do evaluate this down, you end up that the second derivative is equal to 12 pi, which is greater than zero. So yes, we have a minimum here. So this does minimize our surface area. Now let's look, make sure we determine. We want to determine the radius and the height of the, of the um, container that requires the least amount of material. So we, ha we have the radius, but we have not had the height yet. So we need to find the height. So I'm going to use this equation here that we have h is equal to 54 divided by pi r squared. And then we're going to solve this for um, 
H by replacing the R with what we found R to equal to, which is the cube root of 45 divided by pi. And typing that into my calculator, I get that H is approximately 2.91 and R is approximately 2.43. Now remember, I did not type in 2.43 into my H equation to find my H value. That would get us a rounding error. So you make sure that you only round at the end. So write my answer as a sentence form. So the coin beef hash container should have a radius of approximately 2.43 inches by 2.91 and a height of approximately 2.91 inches. And this would result in using the least amount of material and so therefore saving the company more money. Okay, pause the video again. I want you to try the next example. See if you can figure out the dimensions of the field with, which will be le least expensive to enclose. Step one, we need to draw a diagram for the situation. So I'm gonna label our sides as X and Y because it forms a rectangle. And then we're gonna come up, what are we trying to um, minimize in this case? We want the least expensive enclosure. So we need to minimize cost of building the fence. So our primary equation is gonna be the cost of the fence. And the cost is gonna be equal to each side times how much it costs to build that side. So our two X sides cost us $3 each. So three times two X. One of the Y's cost $3, and the Y along the river costs $5 per meter. So simplifying that down, I get that my cost function is equal to 6X plus 8Y. Again, I have a problem. My cost function, my primary equation is in two independent variables, X and Y, so I need to find a secondary equation. Find your secondary equation. So look at the other given information to find our secondary equation. The area of the field is to be 1,200 square meters. So area, which is x times y, is equal to 1,200. Solve that for y, and I get y is equal to 1,200 divided by x. So go back to my cost equation, replace y with 1,200 divided by x, and simplify down. Now we need to perform the second derivative test to find our maximum value. Now that this cost function is in terms of one variable c, I'm going to rewrite it in function notation as c of x. So the derivative of c with respect to x is going to be 6 minus 9,600 um, x to the negative 2. And then we're just going to simplify this down. Now again, our feasible region for this is that x cannot be, um, x must be greater than 0, y also must be greater than 0. So since my feasible region is x is greater than zero, I don't have to worry about when the derivative does not exist. That cannot be a critical value because that would be when x is zero, which does not make sense. So all I have to worry about is when our derivative equals zero, and that would be when the numerator equals zero. So solving that equation, I get x squared is equal to 1600, so x is equal to plus or minus 40. But x must be greater than zero, so I can disregard the negative 40 and say that x is 40. So I only have one critical value left to work with that works in that feasible region. And so, to, continuing our second derivative test, I need to find the second derivative of our cost function, which would be 19,200x to the negative 3. Evaluate this cost function at our critical value of 40, and that's definitely going to give us a positive value. And so, since it's positive, that represents a minimum. So yes, we have minimized cost. So that's the least expensive enclosure. So now we need to write the answer to our question. So find the dimensions of the field. So I know the x dimension, but I do not know the y dimension. So I need to go back to our equation where we have y equals, and that's y equals 1,200 divided by x, plug in 40 in place of x, and solve for our y dimension. That gives us that y is 30. So write our answer as a sentence with remembering our units of measurement. Now in this one, when I write my sentence, you need to be very, you can't just say dimensions of 30 by 40. You need to specify which dimension is along the river because that's going to be crucial to the cost of this function. If you do the wrong dimension, if you do the 40 along the river, not the 30, um, that would not give you the minimum cost. So be very specific when you're writing your sentence for this one. Here's one example of how you can write the sentence. To minimize the cost of the fence, the dimensions of the field should be 30 meters, and that 30 meters would be along the river by 40 meters, where 40 meters is perpendicular to the, to the river.